Hello guys and welcome! My name is Sorin and today I will test these active balancers because I plan to use them in future projects. I will also use this battery monitor slash tester. I bought a few of these modules and today I will test them. I need a battery pack. These are some very old and abused lithium ion cells. They are perfect for this test. I will make the battery pack using my spot welder. If you want to see how I build it, you can check out this video. The current flow will not be very high, so I am using nickel strips with a thickness of only 0.1 mm. I will also add some small strips on the positive and negative terminals of the battery pack. The spot welder is set to the fourth power level. Three sets of balance leads are needed for this test. Now it's easy to solder the wires on the nickel strips. This is a 3S BMS protection board with passive balancing. I will use it to charge the battery pack. And I also want to see how it reacts in combination with the active balancer. The BMS board is soldered and I have two more balance leads with connectors. To be easy to understand what happens with the battery pack, I also marked the cells. Counting starts from the negative terminal of the battery pack. To test the active balancer and monitor the lithium cells, I will use this battery monitor slash tester. I recently bought this one, so let's see if it's any good. First I will connect the battery tester. I have a 3S battery pack, so I will use the 4 pin connector. The check engine light, I mean the check battery light is on. That's not good. So what does this mean? When there is a voltage difference higher than 0.2 volts between the cells, the check battery indicator is flashing. I will connect the active balancer now. One of the red LEDs lit up, indicating that there is an energy transfer between the third and the second cell. The check engine light is off. The balancer has detected a voltage difference higher than 0.1 volts or 100 millivolts and it's transferring energy from the third cell, which has a higher voltage, to the second cell. This energy transfer is done with maximum 1.2 amps, and it's decreasing according to the voltage difference. But what about the first cell? It's missing all the action because it's only 90 millivolts lower than the neighboring cell. Let's bring it to the party by discharging it slowly with a small load, two light bulbs in series. Now both LEDs on the balancer are turned on, so the third cell which has the highest voltage is transferring energy to the second cell. And in the same time there is another transfer from the second cell to the first cell. This is a great party we are having right here. But the first cell is charging fast and after a minute the voltage difference between the first and the second cell is less than 30 mV, so the energy transfer stops and the LED turns off. I will disconnect the active balancer now, because I want to test the passive balancing feature of the BMS board. I need a 12.6 volts charger for this battery pack, and I will use my volt slash ammeter to monitor the charging current. If I fast forward, you can see that the voltage is increasing. According to the specifications of this BMS board, when one of the cells reaches 4.2 volts, it triggers the balancing feature. The third cell got to 4.2 volts, so the BMS board connects this tiny resistor to that cell. The resistor draws around 100 mA and turns it into heat, so we know that the balancing process has started. The purpose of this resistor is to decrease the charging current of the third cell and keep it at 4.2 volts, until the other two cells catch up. So, all the cells will end up with about the same voltage when the charging process is completed. But there is a problem. This type of passive balancing works great with new cells, which get unbalanced very slowly over time. But what I have here are some old and abused cells, which I selected especially for this test. These lithium cells now have different capacity and behave differently when charging and discharging. You can see that the third cell is already fully charged now, but because the other two cells are charging slower, the total charging current is still high. So even if the balancing resistor is using 100 mA, the third cell is still getting charged with 450 mA. 
This is not good for the third cell, because its voltage is getting higher and higher. The overcharge protection feature of the BMS board finally kicks in and stops the charging process when the cell gets to 4.3 volts. But at this time the third cell is already damaged. There are lithium polymer cells that work with 4.3 and even 4.4 volts, but the lithium ion cells I'm using should be charged to maximum 4.2 volts. If you have a battery pack made with old cells, this active balancer does a much better job, because it's wasting less energy and it can balance the cells with a higher current if needed, without overcharging them. The battery tester also has a balancing feature, I'm gonna try it now, but pay attention, it's very complicated. There you go! Just press a button and all the cells will be discharged to the value of the lowest cell. You can also set the lowest voltage at which the balancing feature works, but that's for pros. The tester has a similar passive balancing feature because it has a lot of SMD resistors in the back and it's getting warm. And after a minute all the cells are discharged to 3.82 volts. It has a mode button. You can set the lowest voltage for the balancing and the lowest voltage for the discharge function. You set the value, exit the menu and then just press discharge and now the battery tester will discharge the cells to 3 volts. If you want to stop the process just press the cancel button. Now I want to balance the cells using the active balancer and charge them in the same time. The third cell is charging faster, so the active balancer is continuously transferring energy to the second cell. The charging is almost finished, and you can see that the cells have a much closer voltage level to each other, compared to what the BMS can do with 100 mA. I want to thank all my patrons for their support. If you want to see more DIY videos and updates about my future projects, you can check out my Patreon page. And now I will answer questions that has flooded the DIY community lately. Can a single TP4056 module charge an entire battery pack? I will use this module to charge only the middle cell. The balancer must do the rest of the job and charge the other cells. Will it be able to do that? The balancer immediately began to transfer energy from the middle cell to the other two cells. The voltage is increasing, but very slowly. The balancer has a lot of work to do. Both LEDs are lit on the balancer, so it continues to transfer energy from the middle cell to the other two cells. After 25 minutes the middle cell reached 4.1 volts, and the other two cells are not far behind. My cat is not very helpful with this project. After a total of 3 hours you can see that the battery pack is almost fully charged and the cells are balanced within a voltage difference of only 40 mV. This active balancer is amazing, you can charge an entire battery pack by charging only one cell, but also destroying it. I will disconnect the TP4056 module now and continue to charge the battery pack using the BMS. Look at the middle cell, the BMS board can balance the cells with no problem now, because the voltage difference between the cells is very small. So using an active balancer in parallel with a passive balancer works great, especially with all the unbalanced cells. Check out these values right here. This type of BMS is also good if you use it correctly. Let's get back to the active balancer. I will suddenly unbalance the cells connecting a big load two light bulbs in parallel to the third cell. The second LED on the balancer is flashing now, you can't see it on camera, so it doesn't react well to sudden voltage drops. I'm guessing that this active balancer is made for bigger battery packs, where there are no sudden voltage drops. It does have a high balance current, maximum 1.2 amps. But if I remove the load, the balancing process starts automatically. Let's try it again with a smaller load, only one light bulb. It works fine. After 40 seconds both LEDs are on, so it transfers energy from the first cell to the second cell and also from the second cell to the third cell. 
And when I remove the uneven load, these damaged cells are still balanced within a voltage difference of only 50 mV. I will definitely use this type of active balancer in future projects. I also ordered some lithium iron phosphate cells and I will start testing them soon. In the meantime, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, share and subscribe to my channel. Bye!